Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicles Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. So I have been trying to keep y'all up to date on this Tim Norman case. And let me tell you, this case in my eyes is so open and shut, at least for your boy Tim. This man will never, ever, ever, ever see the light of day again. And I'm here to tell you why. But before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of this tea. Now let's get back into it. So Tim Norman from Sweetie Pies, if you don't know the backstory, I have several videos that will catch you right back up. This video is going to be long and for the folks that are looking for an update, I got you. So I have a 28 page document y'all and it will absolutely blow your mind. It's filled with text messages, five insurance policies, Tim tried to take out on Andre and a new co-conspirator child. I told you before, once this case hits the feds, they were cooked. I was gonna summarize the document but I want you to get the feeling that I felt when I read it so we are going to go through it together because I tell you what that Tim Norman ain't ish he will never be ish and the way he did his nephew I hope Andre's spirit haunts and taunts him for the rest of his days y'all this document had me heated so let's break it down so this document starts off with an introduction and the reason why this introduction is important is because it's going to tell you exactly why this insurance fraud happened and why they're being charged with it they lied on these insurance documents and when I say that I'm speaking of James Timothy Norman and his insurance agent Wally Wael Yagnum. Now it says Andre Montgomery was born on October 14th, 1994. Andre Montgomery's paternal uncle was James Timothy Norman. Andre Montgomery's father, the brother of James Timothy Norman, died in Los Angeles, California in 1994. That's very important, remember that. Andre Montgomery's Missouri non-driver's license indicated that his height was 5'11 and his weight is 185, remember that as well. At no point did Andre Montgomery ever seek or obtain medical treatment at the People's Health Center. Remember that as well. In August of 2014, Andre Montgomery completed a housing application in which he indicated that he was employed at a shop called Tobacco Road, that his hourly wage was $7.25, and that in the month of July 2014, he had earned $696.47. Okay, so we're gonna get to the first count. So, count one, murder for hire conspiracy. Beginning at a time unknown to the grand jury, but up to and including March 14th, 2016, and through the date of the superseding indictment within the Eastern District of Missouri and elsewhere, James Timothy Norman, Terrica Tanisha Ellis, and Travail Anthony Hill, he's the new co-conspirator, we're gonna get into him in a minute, together with other persons known and unknown to the grand jury, did knowingly and intentionally combine, conspire, and agree to commit an offense against the United States of America to wit the crime of murder for hire in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1958 by using and causing others to use facilities of interstate commerce to wit cellular cell phones with the intent that the murder of Andre Montgomery be committed in violation of the laws of the state of Missouri as consideration for the receipt of and as consideration for a promise and agreement to pay things of pecuniary value, namely money along with other benefits. Said conspiracy offense resulted in the death of Andre Montgomery on March 14, 2016. Now the object and purpose. The object and purpose of this conspiracy were the murder of Andre Montgomery, the nephew of James Timothy Norman, and the obtaining of money as a result of and in exchange for the commission of Andre Montgomery's murder. So they were all collecting money. Tim was going to collect money from this insurance and they were all going to get money from Tim. We'll get into that in a second. The means and methods by which the conspiracy was sought to be accomplished included among other things the following. A. It was part of the conspiracy that on or about October 14, 2014, James Timothy Norman attempted to obtain a $250,000 life insurance policy on his 20-year-old nephew, Andre Montgomery, for which James Timothy Norman was the sole beneficiary and through AmeriCo Financial Life and Annuity Insurance Company, 
This application was later withdrawn. Okay, so let me get in your mind for a second. So a year and a half before Andre was murdered, Tim attempted to take out a life insurance policy on Andre back in October of 2014, and this policy was withdrawn. It was $250,000. Now let's catch up to see what Tim did two weeks later. It was further part of the conspiracy that on or about August 31st, 2014, just two weeks after trying to take out the first policy, Tim attempts to take out another policy. Y'all heard this, Tim attempts to take out another policy on Andre in the amount of $200,000 in addition to an accidental death rider in the amount of $200,000 and a 10 year term rider in the amount of $50,000 through the independent order of Forrester's here and after referred to as Forrester's policy. James Timothy Norman was the sole beneficiary on this policy. This is the only policy that's issued. Section C, it was further part of the conspiracy that on or about March 16th, 2015, James Timothy Norman attempted to obtain a replacement policy on Andre Montgomery through Royal Neighbors of America in the amount of $249,999, but the application was denied. So that was policy number three. Section D, it was further part of the conspiracy that on or about September 18th, 2015, James Timothy Norman attempted to obtain an additional life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery through United States of Omaha Life Insurance Company in the amount of $300,000, but the application was denied. So, okay, let's recap. He was already approved for the $200,000 life insurance policy with Foresters, which also included a accidental death rider in the amount of $200,000. So that's $400,000 and then $50,000 was added for a 10 year term writer. So that's $450,000. Tim decides to be greedy and take out a $300,000 policy along with what he already had, but that was denied. Tim still wants to go for more. He wants to be greedy. So section E, it was further part of the conspiracy that on or about September 24th, 2015, James Timothy Norman attempted to obtain an additional life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery through the Capital Life Insurance Company doing business as Liberty Bankers Life in the amount of $250,000, but the application was denied. It was further part of the conspiracy that the application for all five Five of these life insurance applications on Andre Montgomery contained materially false information including false statements regarding Andre Montgomery's income, occupation, health history, and family history. It was further part of the conspiracy that James Timothy Norman flew from Los Angeles, California to St. Louis, Missouri and arrived in St. Louis, Missouri on March 14, 2016. This was the day that Andre was murdered. It was further part of the conspiracy that on or about March 14, 2016, James Timothy Norman and Terrica Ellis purchased prepaid track phones, cellular devices at a Walgreens located in the Central West End neighborhood of the city of St. Louis. It was further part of the conspiracy that James Timothy Norman and Terrica Ellis communicated with one another for the duration of March 14, 2016, using the newly purchased prepaid cellular devices. It was further part of the conspiracy that Terrica Tanisha Ellis advised Andre Montgomery to initiate all further communication with her on March 14, 2016, using her newly purchased prepaid cellular device. It was further part of the conspiracy that Terrica Tanisha Ellis communicated with Andre Montgomery throughout the day on March 14, 2016, for the purpose of determining his whereabouts. It was further part of the conspiracy that Terrica Tanisha Ellis used her prepaid cellular device to communicate Andre Montgomery's location to James Timothy Norman, Travell Anthony Hill, and or other co-conspirators throughout the day on March 14th, 2016. And that is very important because we only knew about her communicating with Timothy. We knew about her contacting one other person via phone. We did not know the name of that person, but that person was contacted exactly one minute before Andre was murdered. And that person was Travell Anthony Hill. Now the fact that they're saying and or other co-conspirators, there's somebody else that was there in the car, I believe, 
with Travail Anthony Hill. They are not charging him with being the trigger man, but I have a feeling he was riding in the car with the actual trigger man. They know who this person is. They're just waiting to get him. It was further part of the conspiracy that at about 7.07 p.m. Central Standard Time on March 14, 2016, Andre Montgomery texted his location 3964 Natural Bridge to Terika Tanisha Ellis on her newly purchased prepaid cellular device. It was further part of the conspiracy that immediately upon learning Andre Montgomery's location, Terika Tanisha Ellis relayed the address to James Timothy Norman, Travail Anthony Hill, and or other co-conspirators. There's someone else involved and that person is going down soon, watch. It was further part of the conspiracy that in the 22 minutes after learning Andre Montgomery's location at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue, Terika Tanisha Ellis called, attempted to call, or sent text messages to Travail Anthony Hill at least five times using her newly purchased prepaid cellular device. It was further part of the conspiracy that Terika Tanisha Ellis met Andre Montgomery at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue in the city of St. Lewis at approximately 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on March 14th, 2016 for the purpose of luring Andre Montgomery outside of the residence. It was further part of the conspiracy that Andre Montgomery was shot and killed in front of the residence at 3964 Natural Bridge Avenue at approximately 8.02 p.m. Central Standard Time. It was further part of the conspiracy that at 8.03 p.m. Central Standard Time, Terika Tanisha Ellis called James Timothy Norman on his newly purchased prepaid cellular device then immediately began driving back to her home in memphis tennessee it was further part of the conspiracy that approximately five and a half hours after the homicide in the early mornings of march 15 2016 james timothy norman flew back to los angeles california it was further part of the conspiracy that on march 15 2016 james timothy norman and terica tanisha ellis ceased all use of their prepaid cellular devices it was further part of the conspiracy that between March 15, 2016 and March 17, 2016, Terika Tanisha Ellis deposited over $9,000 in cash into multiple bank accounts in Memphis, Tennessee. Let me go ahead and tell y'all about Dumb Dumb number three, Travail Anthony Hill. It was further part of the conspiracy that on March 16, 2016, two days after the murder of Andre, Travail Anthony Hill conversed with his brother Tony Whitfield via recorded jail calls to discuss Andre Montgomery's murder and Travail Anthony Hill's payment on a jail telephone. He is so bright. A jail telephone is where he decides to discuss this information. Moving on along, it was further part of the conspiracy that on March 16, 2016, Travail Anthony Hill accepted a $5,000 cash payment at the direction of James Timothy Norman. It was further part of the conspiracy that on March 18, 2016, remember this is four days after the murder, Wael, Rabbi, Yagnum, and James Timothy Norman contacted the independent order of foresters for the purpose of inquiries as to how to collect on the aforementioned Forrester's policy. So four days after the murder, you're already trying to get money. It was further part of the conspiracy that James Timothy Norman continued to contact the Independent Order of Foresters on March 21st, 2016, August 1st, 2016, August 15th, 2016, and August 26th, 2016, and November 18th, 2016 for the purpose of attempting to collect on the aforementioned Forrester's policy. It was further part of the conspiracy that in September 2018, James Timothy Norman retained counsel who sent a letter to the Independent Order of Foresters demanding that they pay out on the aforementioned Foresters policy. It was further part of the conspiracy that in October 2018, James Timothy Norman submitted an affidavit to the Independent Order of Foresters for the purpose of collecting on the aforementioned policy in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 1958. The grand jury charges that on or about March 14, 2016 in the city of St. Louis within the Eastern District of Missouri. The defendants herein who we're talking about is James Timothy Norman, Terika Tanisha Ellis, and Travail Anthony Hill aided and abetted one another and or others used and caused others to use facilities of interstate commerce to wit cellular telephones 
with the intent that the murder of Andre Montgomery be committed in violation of the laws of the state of Missouri as consideration for the receipt of and as consideration for a promise and agreement to pay things of pecuniary value, namely money, along with other things, said offense resulted in the death of Andre Montgomery on March 14, 2016. So we're going to get into the wire and mail fraud conspiracies. So that's Wally Y.O. Yognum and James Timothy Norman. Now the allegations contained in paragraph one through six are realleged and incorporated herein beginning in or about october of 2014 and continuing until at least as of late september 2019 in the eastern district of missouri and elsewhere james timothy norman and wail rabbi yagnam the defendants herein did voluntarily and intentionally combine inspire confederate and agree with each other and others known and unknown to the grand jury to commit the following offenses against the united states having devised and intended to devise a scheme to obtain money and property by means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses and representation and for the purpose of executing such scheme and attempting to do so did knowingly cause an attempt to cause to be transmitted by means of wire communication in interstate commerce writing signs and signals in the form of interstate and international telephone calls all in violation of title 18 united states code section 1343 having devised and intended to devise a scheme to obtain money and property by means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses and representation and for the purpose of executing such scheme and attempting to do so did knowingly cause an attempt to cause documents to be sent or delivered by any private or commercial interstate carrier or knowingly caused to be delivered by mail or such carriers according to the direction therein in violation of title 18 united states code 1341 all in violation of title 18 united states code section 1349 in furtherance of the conspiracy and to affect the illegal objects thereof defendants james timothy norman and Wael rabbi yagnam and others known and unknown to the grand jury use the following ways manners and means among others to commit wire fraud and mail fraud the primary purpose of the conspiracy was for james timothy norman aided and abetted by wail rabbi yagnam to obtain and to be able to collect on a life insurance policy on his nephew andre montgomery in the event of andre montgomery's death by means of false and fraudulent representation regarding montgomery's income employment net worth medical history family history and the existence of other pending issued or denied life insurance applications on or about October 14, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam caused to be completed and then submitted an application to American Financial Life and Annuity Insurance Company here and after America by which application James Timothy Norman sought a life insurance policy in the amount of $250,000 on his nephew Andre Montgomery. On the America application, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam listed Andre Montgomery's correct name, social security number, and date of birth. Contact phone number listed for Andre Montgomery by James Timothy Norman and Y.O. Rabbi Yagnam on the Americal application was, and they give the number, a phone number to which James Timothy Norman had been the sole subscriber since 2011. On or about October 14, 2014, James Timothy Norman signed the following attestation passage in the Americo life insurance application. Any person who knowingly presents a false or fraudulent claim for payment of a loss of benefit or knowingly presents false information in an application for insurance is guilty of a crime and may be subject to fines and confinement in prison. We have read the application and represent to Americo that the statements made on this application are true, complete, and correctly recorded to the best of my or our knowledge and belief. I or we agree that Americo can rely on these statements. On or about October 14, 2014, Raleigh Rabbi Yagnam signed the following attestation passage in James Timothy Norman's Americo Life Insurance application stating the following. I hereby certify that I have personally asked each question on this application to the proposed insured that I have truly and accurately recorded on the application the information supplied by him or her and that I have no reason to believe that any of the information provided is inaccurate or incomplete 
If not, I have set forth my reservations in the agent comments remarks sections above. James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum indicated in the AmeriCo life insurance application that James Timothy Norman would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre Montgomery's death. James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum represented in the AmeriCo life insurance application that James Timothy Norman would pay the monthly premium $156.04 from his U.S. bank account ending in 7746. James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum represented that Andre Montgomery was not under the care of a physician. James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum falsely represented in the AmeriCo life insurance application that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $100,000. James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum falsely represented in the AmeriCo life insurance application that Andre Montgomery's height was 5 foot 7 and his weight was 165 pounds. Remember we talked about that in the beginning. On October 7, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Y.O. Rabbi Yagnum exchanged text messages regarding the submission of the life insurance application as follows. Tim says, I got him with me. What info do you need so we can link? We can just sign papers then be done. Then he says, don't want to talk about it in front of him. Yagnum says, okay, we'll just answer the phone. Norman says, he's with me. Yagnum says, I know, watch how I do it. Now you setting your nephew up. Between October 16, 2014, November 3rd, 2014, representatives of America repeatedly attempted to contact Andre Montgomery by means of James Timothy Norman's phone number, which appeared as Andre Montgomery's phone number on the life insurance application. Representatives of America also attempted to contact Wail Rabbi Yagnum via email and telephone with questions regarding the life insurance application, including the reason that Andre Montgomery could could not own the life insurance policy rather than Tim Norman. On Friday, October 31st, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum exchanged the following text messages. Norman says, policy. Yagnum says, you should have by next Friday. They'll call you on Monday. Act like you're Andre. Norman says, okay. Norman says, I ain't seen this ninja in over a week, bro. The following Monday, November 3rd, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum exchanged the following text messages. Yagnum says, what's up? They're going to call you. I need to talk to you first. Norman says, I didn't get email with info. Yagnum says, did they call you? Norman says, yep, I missed it. Norman says, they left callback info. Yagnum says, call them back ASAP. Norman says, I need the info. Norman says, B-Day, social security number, etc. Yagnum says, I just sent it. Norman says, okay. Approximately 20 minutes later on November 3rd, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum exchanged the following text message. Norman says, all good. Yagnum says, cool. On December 8th, 2014, after James Timothy Norman had obtained a life insurance policy from a separate insurance company, he and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum caused the AmeriCo life insurance application to be withdrawn, which was still pending at the time. On or about October 31st, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Y.L. Rabbi Yagnum caused to be completed and then submitted an application to the Independent Order of Foresters. Here and after Foresters, by which application James Timothy Norman sought a life insurance policy in the amount of $200,000, as well as an accidental death rider in the amount of $200,000, and a 10 year term rider of $50,000 on his nephew Andre Montgomery. The $200,000 accidental death rider would pay out in the event Andre Montgomery died of something other than natural causes. The $50,000 10 year term rider would pay out in the event that Andre Montgomery died within 10 years of the policy's issuance. On the Forrester's application, James Timothy Norman and Y.E.L. Rabbi Yagnum identified Andre Montgomery's correct name, social security number, driver's license, and date of birth. On or about October 31st, 2014, James Timothy Norman signed the following attestation passage in the Forrester's life insurance application. I, as evidenced by my signatures in this application, declare that I have reviewed the application. I was asked every question that applies to me and provided the answers shown in this application to these questions. The Statements, answers, and representations contained in this application are full, complete, and true to the best of my knowledge and belief. On or about October 31st, 2014, Wally Rabbi Yagnum signed the following attestation passage 
in James Timothy Norman's Forrester's Life Insurance application stating as follows. Unless specifically stated otherwise in the producer's report, I certify each of the following. A, I am not aware of undisclosed information about the health, habits, or lifestyles of the proposed insured or child identified in this application that might affect insurability. I personally met with the proposed insured owner and each child and reviewed the documents used to verify identity and birth date. I asked the proposed insured, the parent, legal guardian, if the proposed insured is a juvenile and or the owner each question as written in this application to which an answer is shown and recorded the answers as given to me by each person. This application was reviewed by each person signing in the signature section before it was signed by that person. James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam indicated in the Forrester's life insurance application that James Timothy Norman would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre Montgomery's death. James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam represented in the Forrester's insurance application that James Timothy Norman would pay the monthly premium of $185.16 from his U.S. bank account 7746. On or about October 31st, 2014, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that Andre Montgomery had a gross income of $28,000 despite having represented on October 14, 2014 that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $100,000 in the American Life Insurance Policy, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam falsely represented in the Forrester's Life Insurance application that Andre Montgomery had a net worth of $200,000. James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam falsely represented in the Forrester's Life Insurance application that Andre Montgomery's height was 5 foot 7 and his weight was 165 pounds. James Timothy Norman falsely indicated in the Forrester's Life Insurance application that his relationship to Andre Montgomery was both as his uncle and his employer when in fact James Timothy Norman had no employment relationship with Andre Montgomery. Y'all listen to this. James Timothy Norman falsely indicated in his Forrester's life insurance application that Andre Montgomery's father was living. 42 years old and healthy when in fact Andre Montgomery's father and the brother of James Timothy Norman had died in 1994. James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam falsely represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that Andre Montgomery had received a regular checkup from the attending physician at the People's Health Clinic in December of 2013. James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam falsely represented in the Forrester's life insurance application that there was no other life Life insurance applications pending for the proposed insured with Forrester or another insurer when in fact the AmeriCo life insurance application submitted by James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam was still pending. On November 6, 2014, Forrester issued a life insurance policy on Andre Montgomery with the face amount of $200,000 and an accidental death rider of $200,000 and a 10-year term insurance rider of $50,000. James Timothy Norman was the policy owner and so on March 16, 2015, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam exchanged the following text message. Yagnam said, I just contracted with this other company. I can get better cash value on Andre's policy and more coverage for what you're paying. You want me to transfer it? Yagnam said, instead of $200,000, it would be $300,000. Norman said, will we have to resign ish? Then he said, resign. Yagnam said, nah, I can transfer it. Norman said, okay, because he wildin' out here. Yagnam said, I got you. Norman said, ain't even seen this ninja. On March 16, 2015, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam caused to be completed an application to Royal Neighborhood of America, here and after Royal Neighborhoods, by which application James Timothy Norman sought a life insurance policy in the amount of $249,999, as well as an accidental death right in the amount of $249,999 on his nephew Andre Montgomery. The $249,999 accidental death rider would pay out in the event Andre Montgomery died of something other than natural causes. Policies with the face amount or rider amount under $250,000 did not require the insured to have a physical examination in connection with the policy's application. So they made the policy a dollar under what it needed to be to make sure Andre did not have to have a physical examination. On the Royal Neighbors application, James Timothy Norman and Wael Rabbi Yagnam identified Andre Montgomery's correct name, driver's license number, social security number,
number and date of birth. The signature of James Timothy Norman appears on the Royal Neighbors application acknowledging that any person who knowingly presents a false statement in an application for insurance may be guilty of a criminal offense and subject to penalties under state law. On or about March 16, 2015, Wally Rabbi Yagnum signed an attestation in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application indicating that he had personally reviewed the ID of the proposed insured Andre Montgomery. James Timothy Norman and YL Rabbi Yagnum indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that James Timothy Norman would be the sole beneficiary on the policy in the event of Andre Montgomery's death. James Timothy Norman and YL Rabbi Yagnum indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that James Timothy Norman would pay the monthly premium of $187.06 from his U.S. bank account. On March 16, 2015, James Timothy Norman and YL Rabbi Yagnum represented in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $50,000 despite having represented in the America's Life Insurance application on October 14, 2014 that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $100,000 and in the Forrester's Life Insurance application on October 31, 2014 that Andre Montgomery had an annual income of $28,000. James Timothy Norman and Wally Rabbi Yagnum falsely represented in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that Andre Montgomery had a net worth of $200,000. James Timothy Norman and Wally Rabbi Yagnum falsely indicated in the Royal Neighbors Life Insurance application that his relationship to Andre Montgomery was both as his uncle and his employer when in fact James Timothy Norman had no employment relationship with Andre Montgomery. James Timothy Norman and Y.E.L. Rabbi Yagnum falsely represented that Andre Montgomery had received an annual checkup from the attending physician at the People's Choice Center in September of 2014, despite the fact that Andre Montgomery had never been seen or treated at that clinic. On March 17, 2015, Wally Rabbi Yagnum transmitted the life insurance application to Royal Neighbors via fax. On March 17, 2015, James Timothy Norman and Y.E.L. Rabbi Yagnum exchanged the following text message. Norman says, how long is that change process going to take? Yagnum said, a week. Yagnum said, I took care of everything. Norman says, I want to sign papers while I'm in town if I have to. Norman says, okay. Norman says, you need another check. Yagnum says, it's going to be $250,000. Otherwise, he would have had to take a physical for more than that. Norman says, okay. Yagnum says, if I do need a check, you can just take a picture of a voided check just as long as the account numbers are legible and just text it to me. Norman says, double on accidental. Norman says, okay. Yagnum says, of course, so it would be $500,000 in case of an accident. Norman says, okay. Then on April 8th, 2015, they have another set of text messages. Yagnum says, I'm going to keep Andre with Foresters for now. Can't do the change, Norman says. Norman says, your call. Yagnum says, they need his doctor info. Norman says, yeah, let's leave that ish alone. Norman says, doesn't have one, and I ain't seen that little dude in weeks. Then Yagnum says, right. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to this text message from Yagnum to Tim Norman on September 18, 2015. Yagnum said, I changed Andre's insurance to Mutual of Omaha in case they try to contact you. I've been trying to get in contact with you. Your premium went from $189 to $141. You're welcome. And if you wanted to make the benefit over a meal, I could make it happen for $300 a month. Call me, man. Then the following text message is from September 22nd, 2015 between Wally Rabbi Yagnum and James Timothy Norman. Yagnum said, yo, we need to do that interview today and another one with Liberty. Yagnum said, please give me 15 minutes to get this done. Yagnum said, bro, I thought you said you were going to do the interview for me. Norman said, hey, can you text me the info I need? Norman said, the B-Day, social security number, whatever I need to answer the questions. Yagnum said, yeah, but I want to prep you because it's two companies. If you give me 15 minutes, I promise it'll be done. I'm going to text you everything. Norman says, okay, I can't talk right now. I'm with these suit and tie MFs. Now we're going to read text messages from September 23rd, 2015 between Yagnum Yagnum and James Timothy Norman. Yagnum says, Andre Montgomery, he gives his social security number, date of birth, and he says the last time you went to the doctor was in October of 2014 for a physical at Barnes Jewish Hospital. Call Mutual of Omaha at to do the interview, man. We may have to make Andre the owner of the policy and then I'll switch names in six months. They won't let you be owner off top. Norman says, no, that ain't gonna work. Norman says, don't switch owner, leave it alone then. Yagnum says, he don't have to know. Yagnum says, okay. Norman says, he might not make it six months, bro. No kidding. Hmm. 
Yagnum says, damn. Yagnum says, you'll still be the beneficiary, just not the owner. Yagnum says, if he makes it 30 years, you'll get all your money back. Norman says, okay, got you. Yagnum says, but if he dies before, you'll get the benefit. You thought I meant beneficiary instead of owner? Norman says, yeah. Norman says, don't speak that lingo. Yagnum says, you can still be the beneficiary on all of the policies. Just make that call real quick. So Wally sent a text message on September 28th, 2015, and he said, What's up, man? This is Wally. If you can do me a huge favor and get these interviews done today, I would really appreciate it. I'll win a trip if you do. We can do it on three-way and knock it out. And if you let me handle all your employees, we can talk about kickbacks. I know you're busy. Norman says, Man, I'm worried about that thing, bro. I don't want to be recorded on that call. Ish has changed. Yagnum said, Oh, okay. Norman said, He ain't gonna be around much longer. Well, Tim's words definitely did not fall on deaf ears andre montgomery was gone in less than six months tim is an evil individual very calculating in his actions he had been planning this for over two years to take out his own nephew and i think he deserves to rot in hell for it just my plain and simple assertion about it i want to hear from you what do you think about everything that i have read to y'all y'all know chronicles does not do long videos like this child so i definitely wanted to get this story out to you let you know what was happening let you know we're still going to be there come december December 2nd to listen to the court hearing and I will let you know exactly what's happening there but I want to hear from you what do you think about all of this y'all know we're gonna be down in the comments on this one but what do you think about all of this that's happening do you think that the new guy is the trigger man and what do you think Tim's attorney's angle is going to be with trying to get him off or is he even going to try to get him off leave a comment and you know how we do we'll talk about it down below talk to you guys later bye all right in this video I want to tell you about a company called ash kicking now you you know your girl chronicles would not promote a company without doing one of those thorough chronicle speaks investigations honey and ash kicking definitely passed the test y'all make sure to check out ashkicking.com for one of the best 100 percent natural home fragrance and beauty products honey and use my code chronicles at checkout for an extra 15 percent off just for you as always thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that like button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new episodes